here we go. So today we're going to be talking about risk management for registered student organizations. Um, and I have down that we have NTS, RHA, Sigma Tau Delta, and CAB represented here. So those are four active organizations on our campus where you will use, um, you will use risk management and risk management techniques in a lot of your events. Um, and so I just want to encourage you to take notes. Um, we'll go through some examples. We'll only do a couple of them. I have a lot, but I'm more than happy to sit down with you after this to go over more examples if you want more to kind of talk through um, and to think through with somebody else. So um, as it says, I am Katie Cochran. I'm the coordinator for student activities. Um, I'm in the student activities office. Um, if you ever need anything at all um, for getting involved or with your RSO or um, anything student activity related, please feel free to come visit me. Um, I'm in Campus Center on the first floor. So we'll do a quick overview. We will, um, we've done our introductions and our organizations represented. We'll go through the steps of risk management, the types of risks, and then we'll talk about some risks and some past events that have been held on campus. Um, we will talk about identifying risks before an event, so trying to be proactive and think about those things. Um, we'll talk about building risk management into the event planning process, and then we'll go over some quick fast facts on university policies and procedures that affect risk management. And then we will talk about risk management during an event. So like I said, if there's any time that I'm talking too fast or you just need me to slow down and you have a question or a comment, feel free to just get my attention somehow and I'll be happy to go over that with you. So um, we'll start off talking about the steps and stages of risk management. And we're actually gonna start in the blue circle on the left. So your first step is to identify a risk. And this could happen when you're planning an event, it could happen when you're setting up for an event. It could even happen when you're in the middle of an event, but you identify a risk. So you identify something that poses a problem some way, somehow, somewhere with your event. Then you're gonna move up to that green circle. You're gonna assess that risk. Is this a risk that could really hurt somebody? Is this a risk that could hurt the organization? Is this a risk that could hurt the institution? Um, you're gonna assess that risk how severe is that risk? How likely is it that that risk could happen? And then you're gonna move down and you're gonna control the risk or what I call manage the risk. So um, you're gonna, that's when you're gonna implement your risk management. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna go, okay, this is a hazard. This is what I'm gonna do to stop that hazard from hurting someone. And then you're gonna move down and you're gonna review the controls or you're gonna review the management. Um, this has control, whereas uh, we use the word management a lot or, um, or, or we just, you know, we'll just say management. So, so we have, you're, then you're gonna review your risk management and make sure that what you've put into place is what um, is, is working and that it's effective to, to mitigate that risk that you identified, assessed, managed and now you're reviewing. So that's just kind of a good way to remember all of the steps of risk management. Um, and we'll repeat that throughout this presentation, but just to kind of give you a quick little way to remember it, um, I always say identify, assess, uh, identify, assess, manage, and review. And so that's kind of how I remember the steps of risk management to make sure that I'm checking off each, each box of the checklist. So to move into the types of risks, you have physical, reputational, emotional, financial facilities, and dietary. And we will talk about understanding risks and events with those risks. So a physical risk would be at Howdy Dance, which happens every year. Um, we bring in a mechanical bull. Campus Activities Board and Greek Board work on putting Howdy Dance on for the, for the institution. The mechanical bull is a physical risk. Somebody could get knocked off of the mechanical bull. They could fall, they could hurt their head, they could hit weird on their arm, they could hit weird anywhere. And so anytime you have a mechanical bull or something that's active like that, you're automatically putting yourself into an area for a physical risk. So how do we control or how do we manage that risk? Does anybody know? Has anybody been to Howdy and gotten on the bull to know? 
do you have to have like a a paper for people to sign that are going to get on it or something like no they know the risk involved and they don't hold anybody accountable or something yes exactly so we we have a waiver that you sign and then once you've signed that waiver we give you a wristband and what that wristband tells anybody else that walks up is that you have signed the waiver um, that you know the risk and that you're able and and that you will not sue the institution you won't hold anybody accountable you understand that risk and you're taking that risk um, a reputational risk would be something like hosting a political event discussion um, we're in the middle of a an election season and it would be and it could hurt your reputation let's say your organization was going to host an event where people were going to come together and they were going to brainstorm and they were going to talk about the upcoming presidential election you could have someone that gets up there and they may not even be a part of your organization they may not even be a member you may not even know who they are but they may get up get up there and spout off over and over and over again they hate this person or they hate this person or they don't like this group of people or whatever it may be and that could put your organization at a reputational risk because someone that doesn't know your organization and they don't know that that person may not even be a part of of your group may then think oh well that's the campus activities board so that must be what they think and so um, that's kind of running that's kind of a, an just an example of a reputational risk an emotional risk would be the tunnel of oppression for those of you that um, have been to the tunnel of oppression you know that you walk through there are a series of storylines and pictures um, and it can it can be some it can be an event that can really stir up some some emotions and so you when you go in you are putting yourself at an emotional risk um, some of the ways that we control that is that um, as people come in we will put up signs to say um, that you are that that going through you could you could have some emotions stirred up you may see something that triggers something inside of you and so we try to mitigate that risk by really letting you know that you're going into an event um, that is emotional and will have some hot topics that that may bring something up um, any questions so far on the first three okay so the financial risk um, a financial risk is any time that you go into an event um, and you're going to host an event and you don't know if the event is going to pay off for the finances that you're spending um, so for instance you will um, you may um, host an event you've never hosted it before you're putting a lot of money into it and you don't know if a lot of students will come um, a perfect example of this is something that happened just last semester with the March Madness Spring Dance that the Campus Activities Board put on. Um, they actually um, put in a lot of money, a, a good little bit, um, and we only had less than 100 people come. We planned it on a night that Greek Life had a lot of events going on. We planned on a night that a lot of other um, organizations were hosting events and we didn't look at the calendar and so that ended up being something where we risked a lot of money in the beginning and then unfortunately we lost that money and so that was a financial risk that we took by hosting that event on a night um, hosting a brand new event and putting a lot of money into it um, facilities risk would be something where the facility that you're using is um, could be hurt perfect example would be pumpkin painting night sabrina i think you said that you're in nts this was actually something that was brought up by stephanie dobbins from nts she told me a story about one time when nts was hosting a pumpkin painting night and they were in um, the reynolds room and they didn't think about it until they got into the reynolds room but they got in and they realized they didn't have any tarp to put on the floor they didn't have anything to put up on the walls and they had to kind of scramble to get to get some stuff to protect the floor and the walls. And so that was a time when they risked, they had the pumpkins in there, they had paint in there and they didn't have a way to protect those walls and protect the room. So that was a facilities risk. Um, and then the last one is dietary risk. And that one is probably the easiest one. And that's just providing any sort of meal at an event. Anytime you have food at an event, you are running a dietary risk 
that somebody could come and have an allergy. Um, maybe they simply don't like the food and then they think that your organization wasn't thinking about them. Um, we're living in a day and time when different diets um, and different diet fads have really become the thing to do. And so thinking about, do we have an alternative with no meat? Does everything we have have meat in it? Does everything have dairy? Um, and so understanding that, or students that come, you need to make sure that your menu is varied and that you're able to meet them right where they are with all of those needs. So identifying your risk early on, um, identifying risks for an event is totally a group effort. Um, what you wanna do is you want to consider all of the possible risks that could happen, no matter how big or how small those risks may seem. And then you wanna discuss the management of the risks that are brought forward. So you wanna sit down, have a conversation with the other people planning this event, and you wanna be able to say, okay, what, what could go wrong? And I know that that's a, that's a way that a lot of us don't wanna think, but you have to go, okay, what could go wrong? What might get messed up here? Okay, then how do we wanna manage that? Um, a good tip that I give my students is to always look at the event space prior to decorating the event so that they understand the natural layout of the room and any natural risks that there are before decorating. Um, a perfect example of this is the Reynolds room here on campus. In the Reynolds room, we've got the beautiful glass mirrors that a lot of people think are mirrors. Those are actually like million dollar pieces of art and nobody knows that until you hear that from somebody. And so understanding when you go in there that you might not wanna have an event that causes people to bump into the wall or causes people to do anything up against the wall once you know, oh my gosh, these are really nice paintings. And so understanding that that's a natural risk that's in there, so you wanna kind of manage your decorating around that. Then you wanna plan the event with the risks in mind. And then once you've planned the event with those risks in mind, you wanna figure out your course of action for those risks. So we are going to um, just talk through a quick brainstorm. I'm just gonna pick two of these topics out, two of these risk sections out. And then I would love if you guys would just share a quick story or maybe just give a little 30 second scenario of what, of an event that you've hosted or event that you've been at, or maybe it's an event that you want to host um, and how you think that your event could fall into, could have a risk that falls into any of these. So we will start with, um, we'll go with the physical risks. Has, does anyone kind of have a, a story, a scenario, an event, maybe one you've hosted, maybe one you wanna host that had a physical risk involved? Um, for How Do You Dance this year, we did it outside and we kind of made, it was like in front of the bell tower and we, made like the dance area like one of the grass areas that was in front of the bell tower and um we didn't realize that the grass there was kind of squishy and wet and a little slippery so we had to kind of figure out a way and there were like holes in the ground so we had to figure out like a way to block those holes and to prevent people from getting injured while they were dancing so we kind of put like hay bales in the holes and then we moved up the like our fencing on the dance area a little bit to block them from stepping in those areas so so you got to the event and then you realized what the risk was and you kind of had to work with it then that's one of those risks that couldn't really be planned before the event um, just because you don't know that the grass is going to be wet. It could have rained a week ago and it's still wet. Um, unless it rains 10 minutes before your event, sometimes you just assume it's, it's dry. And so, um, yeah, that's a perfect example of a time that an organization got out there to host an event and then they realized that um, there was this issue and they were going to have to manage it right then just to, to keep others safe. Thank you, Hannah. Um, we'll do one more. Why don't we do... Um, a, a financial risk, because I think that's one of the, the tougher ones to sometimes wrap your head around. Does anybody have an example for a financial risk?
Um, Hannah, where are you going to go? Yeah, I, this isn't really like, um, I guess an event plan. Well, kind of, but, um, so for cheer, we go to Daytona, sorry, Daytona every year to compete, um, at nationals. And so the school invests a lot of money in, um, you know, transportation, and then you have to, like, do registration and everything, so usually it totals out to, like, 30,000 something, like, it's a, it's a lot of money, and um, this year, no, not this year, this last year, we ended up not being able to go because of COVID, and they had already paid for the majority of the trip and didn't know if we would get it back, so um, they ended up getting it refunded, I think, but um, it was a big investment for us to not go. Yeah, I think, I think anytime you're investing money, whether it's a trip like that or an event, um, you're kind of running that risk of nobody coming or something like COVID popping up. Maybe, maybe it's not even a national pandemic. Maybe it's just a sickness. Maybe a lot of your, the members on your team end up getting sick and, and they can't make it to your event or, maybe um, the flu strikes campus and has run across campus and that affects the numbers at your event. Um, so that's a great example. Thank you, Hannah. We will move on from the brainstorm, but like I said earlier, if you ever have a question about these, I'll put my contact info at the end. I'll be happy to work through these in case you're like, oh gosh, I knew physical and financial, but I don't understand reputational or emotional or one of the other ones. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to, um, to talk through those with you. Let's see. There we go. So we will do just one scenario um, and then we will move on from that. But I did want to just talk through one scenario um, and I've got a full slide of them. So one, two, three, four, five, somebody just say a number between one and five and that's the one that we'll do. And we'll just talk through that one. Four. Four, okay. So your organization is hosting an event open to the community discussing the upcoming national election. What is the risk for that and how can you help prepare for and manage that risk? So what is it, political or uh, reputational risk? Yes, that would be reputational, yep. Yeah, how could we? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, would would you have to like make sure the people representing the organization like knew that they needed to be, I guess, not be biased about anything they say? Yeah, I think that would be. I think that's the most important part. Would be to get if you're going to have speakers, um, maybe to give those speakers. Um, some sort of talk or even let them go through a workshop of how to not be biased, um, how to kind of keep their personal opinions to the back unless, unless, I mean, if it's a time where your personal opinions are asked for, um, but maybe to talk about how can we as an organization be unbiased here? How can we bring the community together to talk about the upcoming election without telling them who they, who we think they should vote for or what issues we think they should or shouldn't stand for. And so, yeah, I think getting, getting those speakers together. Um, I think another one would be to, to have a talk with, with the audience beforehand and let them know, you know, someone may say something that you don't agree with. We ask that you, um, that you're, you act like an adult about this, right? Um, that you don't lash out if there's something said that you don't agree with because that's another risk that you could run into is that somebody gets upset and they want to automatically voice that opinion about why they're mad or why they don't agree and maybe having a, a, a discussion about this is a discussion. Um, we're just talking about our options here and so yeah kind of just kind of prefacing the audience with this is what to expect, this is how this will go and this is what we hope you get from it. And this is what we hope you don't get from it. We hope that you don't leave angry. We hope you don't leave mad. We hope you don't leave thinking that 
you know, we're an organization that's here telling you what we think you should do or how to think. And so, um, yeah, I think you're exactly right, Sabrina. Any other thoughts on that one? Kind of how you could prepare for that risk? I think it would be good to have like a moderator just mm -hmm. to like guide the discussion. Yeah, for sure. A moderator would definitely be needed. Um, that would be important. And I would say with that moderator to be sure that you're getting someone that you know um, wouldn't be biased, right? So um, you would want to find somebody or seek somebody out that you know could stand up there and, and give the facts and give and ask the questions in a way that doesn't make one side or the other feel attacked or feel like they don't agree with them. And so that, that's super important, Hannah, to make sure that you have a moderator and then to make sure that that moderator knows how to moderate in a way that's, that's fair and um, fair to all groups represented. Anything else on that scenario? You picked a good one, Sabrina. Very timely. Yeah, that was like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we'll move on. Um, fast facts for university policies related to risk management. Um, and I will let you guys answer these. And then if I need to answer them or give or elaborate, I can. But um, is alcohol allowed at campus events? And are there any exceptions? No and no. OK, so the first one is no, no alcohol. The second one is actually a yes, um, but it typically would never relate to RSOs. So alcohol is not allowed um, at campus events. The only exception is if it's an event that's approved by the chancellor um, to, ho to have alcohol there. Um, and more than likely, a registered student organization is not gonna be the group that gets approved for that. So I would say for the case of RSOs, that would be a no and a no. Um, are recreational drugs allowed at campus events? No. Correct. It is no. Um, number three, who should I contact in the case of a medical emergency or suspected alcohol or drug use? So for that one, you would want to contact, um, you'd want to contact 911, obviously, um, if it's a medical emergency. Um, for suspected alcohol or drug use, you would want to contact our university police, so UPD, um, and they would be able to handle that. You would not have to handle it, um, but you would, that's who you would contact. For the medical emergency, you would want to contact 911 first, and then you would want to um, just let UPD know what's going on. Um, number four, who should I contact for structural damage to a facility on campus that my organization was utilizing? Does anybody know the person? So that answer is um, Ashley Goodson. Um, she works in the box office. And she's actually the person that handles all room reservations and making sure that if you need something um, that she can get it to you. So her name is Ashley Goodson. Once again, if you need her email, feel free to email me after this, or you can stay on the chat and um, and and I'll be and I'll be happy to give it to you in case you ever need that. Um, Number five, what should I do if the media shows up at an event that my organization is hosting? Um, and I should probably reword that to um, who should I contact if the media shows up? So that answer is going to be to let your advisor know. Um, I would say if your advisor's at the event to let them know um, as the staff member in charge of that event or assisting with that event. And then your advisor would be able to send it up to um, our public relations person for the university. Um, they would always want to know if the media was there for whatever reason. And so your advisor would be able to direct you or direct them to that person 
um, to make sure that they're approved to be on campus, they can come to campus and that, and that um, you're okay to, to answer their questions. Uh, last question, should I consider risk management when planning events that will be held off campus? Yes. Yes, you definitely should. So um, obviously we're in the world of virtual events currently. So um, not so much when it's virtual. Now you do have some risks as far as like, what if my internet goes out or, um, you know, what if something happens and I can't connect to this Zoom call for this event? But let's say you're gonna have an event off campus um, and it's an in-person event, then you definitely still wanna consider risk management and you wanna make sure that you're walking through the facility, that you're working with the catering people to make sure that everything that you're giving um, is okay, that there's a dietary substitute um, for, for students that come that maybe don't eat certain things or need certain uh, dietary things in their meals. So you definitely wanna still consider risk management even when planning events for off campus. That's very important. So I couldn't get through this without talking about COVID-19. Um, for COVID-19 risk management, you wanna always refer to the state and university guidelines to ensure that you're in compliance with COVID-19 management policies. Um, and then I just put at the bottom where you can find those. So I can also drop that link into the chat and then you can save that. And that, that's a website that gets updated every week. Um, and it's specific to UAFS and it will allow you to make sure that you know that you're doing the right thing, um, you're handling things well, and that um, you're, you're within the management of, of COVID-19 risks that we automatically are living in right now. So that's the end. Um, right there you have my email, you have my office number. Um, like I said, we would go over the graph one more time. So like I said earlier, you want to identify your risk, you want to assess your risk, you want to manage or control your risk, and then you want to review that management. So just remember, identify, assess, control, and review. So with all that said, any questions? No, well, that was pretty interesting, though. So I liked that. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you. And um, Sabrina, thank you for